<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Q&A. This Q&A is all about what I use. So I've been getting lots of questions about what kind of computer do you have. I get questions all the time. What kind of keyboard do you have? Probably because I pound on my keyboard. <laughs> what kind of microphone do you have? Why do you use Windows? Why are you using Idle? What are you using to film? What are you using to edit? All this kind of stuff. So let's get to it. So first of all, to record any webcam stuff, I use a, C, a Logitech C920, I think it is. Um, it's okay. For some reason, I can't get to be like as crisp on my face or like on an item or something that I'm showing as possible, and that it'll probably show in this uh, video. I don't know why that is because I've had multiple of these C920s. Um, I've seen other people's videos with C920s, and they look way better than mine. Don't know what I'm doing wrong. So if you know what I'm doing wrong, let me know. Uh, anyway. Uh, that's what I use to record what I use to, or at least record video. What I use to record um, audio is a Blue Yeti. Before that, I actually used a Blue Snowball, and I, I liked, I just started liking Blue product. Um, unfortunately, actually, the microphone I'm recording on now, this is probably the second or third video that I've recorded on it, because my previous Blue Yeti died. Very unfortunate. Um, pretty expensive, high-quality microphone. Should have lasted longer than it did. Um, lasted about a year and a half. Luckily, even Blue agrees that their product should last longer. They come with a two-year warranty. So this bad boy is going home, and hopefully I'll get another one refurbished or something. Anyway, there's that. But I went ahead and bought the exact same one uh, because I like the recording quality. The only pretty much other option for like a night, just a quick, easy USB microphone is there's a Razer or something. Um, and I'm just not confident in their products yet, so I just didn't want to buy that. Um, Two-year warranty is still pretty good, I, so I'm gonna, I kind of decided to stick with Blue one more time. If this microphone dies in a year and a half, I will switch. <laughs> so anyways, that's the microphone. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, to record the screen, I use XSplit if I'm on Windows. I'll use OBS if I'm on Linux. Now, here's a problem. So, part of the reason why you guys always see me on Windows is um, not because I only develop on Windows, but it's mostly because Windows is the best place for me to record. It it produces recordings that don't lag. It produces recordings that don't have any flickering. So like, for example, when I'm on uh, Linux, sometimes those, the, the recording will start to lag and the audio and video will get messed up. Also, for some reason, the taskbar starts to flicker, <laughs> which if you go watch like the TensorFlow videos, it really was a problem because you're using your GPU. But even when I wasn't using my GPU to do like processing and stuff, it was still happening. Um, and that's really frustrating. So, uh, so I just, I don't record in Linux because it just doesn't work very well. Uh, and I think it's maybe because of the m maybe multiple monitors and output, I've found that, uh, again, at least Ubuntu, doesn't seem to handle multiple monitors very well. So, um, at least not four. Um, I'm sure plenty of people get by with just two monitors or something like that, but especially if you've got like multiple graphics cards, uh, Ubuntu is like, I don't know. <laughs> and I've tried, I've looked to tr figure out how to fix that and stuff, and I just can't. Uh, luckily now I just have one GPU. It's great. I'm back to just down, down to one GPU now, so it's a little better, but still has recording issues. Uh, moving along, let me pop this off. So someone asked me if I use dual monitors. Absolutely not. I use quad monitors. I actually used to use five. Um, that fifth monitor there, actually, I've just got it turned off now. That's where my cameras are. Um, I just didn't feel like showing the world where all of my cameras are placed. So anyway, that's off, but normally it's on. I used to use it for um, my music. I would just put my music up there. But since I've switched to just one GPU, now um, I can only hook up four monitors to that one GPU. Oh, it's, it's very hard. Anyway, um, this is my new microphone. Um, this is my essential coffee. This is my keyboard. A lot of people have been asking about the keyboard. It's a Sidewinder X4. It's a Microsoft Sidewinder X4. I love the keyboard. It's programmable. It has like three modes too, so you can program each mode to do different things for you. Um, fantastic keyboard. They don't make them anymore as far as I know. I paid $50, five zero, for this keyboard. If you want to acquire one nowadays, you generally have to pay a hundred or more dollars. I don't think it's worth that much. I would pay up to a hundred dollars for another one, but beyond that, I just wouldn't. Uh, the screens are just typical 1080p screens. I would really like to have a 4K monitor. I just don't have one. 
they're expensive, like 300 bucks even. In, I just want like at night, it's like 23, I could go with 24 and just replace that middle one. Um, I'd really like that to be a 4K monitor, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, on to the computer. So I'm just gonna take the front off now. So it's more easier to see everything. All right, so here we have everything. Uh, probably one of the first two things you'll notice are the things with lights. So um, first of all, this is the, the thing in the middle, the Corsair thing. It's probably really hard to read, but it says Corsair. Um, that is a the C100 water cooler, and actually that's this up here as well. This is where the radiator is, and it shoots the air through the radiator up here cools that, sends the water back down here, and uh, water cools the processor. A lot of people are uh, nervous about water cooling. I have been using Corsair water coolers for about six years now. Uh, I've used probably about 10 of them. I had one uh, fail me after about probably two or three years. Uh, but that failure was actually, it just stopped cycling. Like the actual pump stopped working. It's not like it just spewed water everywhere. I've never heard of a production um, water cooler that just spewed water everywhere. They just die. Um, and again, it was just the motor that died. It wasn't some sort of connection or anything that failed. So anyway, I highly recommend water cooling. The thing that kills all electrical components, um, I suppose, is water. But also heat. Heat is what is going to end the life and, and shorten the lifespan of all of your electrical components. So you want to keep things as cool as possible. The second thing with lights is the Titan X GPU, 12 gigs of VRAM for all your VRAM needs. Um, <laughs> not much to say other than a super powerful GPU. It does pretty much any game you could ever want. And it's also great for deep learning. Uh, moving right along, um, the motherboard um, actually, let's go back to the GPU. The GPU is EVGA. Um, it's obviously an NVIDIA GPU. I have not noticed any quality difference significantly with any of the graphics card uh, producers, um, but I highly recommend NVIDIA GPUs. I've only used a few AMDs, um, but to me, uh, NVIDIA is the clear victor. Um, anyway, moving along from there, we've got... Uh, the motherboard is an ASRock X99. Pretty much all motherboard manufacturers have mixed reviews, um, especially like with like dead on arrival products. That just happens. Same thing with RAM. If you get like 10 RAM sticks, probably one of them is dead. <laughs> it's just like, it seems to be the way things are. Um, so uh, with motherboards, it's kind of the same thing. There's a lot of stuff going on on a motherboard. You probably got a one in 10 chance of getting a dead on arrival motherboard. And that's unfortunate, it's annoying. Um, but for, at least for me, performance-wise, I've never received a dead-on-arrival ASRock uh, motherboard. I believe it happens to people, but I've never had that problem. Also, again, all of the stuff that I'm talking about, I've used these products for, you know, at least a half a decade and run them 24-7. And really, this computer here... Uh, it does get turned off at night, mostly because it's a huge power hog, but also I do a lot of my processing in the cloud now, so I don't actually run at home. But there was a time when I had about six, not about, I had six large computers just like this, and I ran them 24-7 uh, in my apartment. <laughs> it was enough to displace the ambient temperature about 20 degrees. Crazy. So <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so the ASRock motherboards, I've just always bought them because... Um, because they've always performed well for me. Next up, we've got 32 gigs of RAM. Um, nothing really to write home about there. I, this motherboard actually can go all the way up to 128 gigs of RAM. Just haven't found the need. <laughs> There's eight slots for RAM. Um, let's see, we got a uh, Audigy Sound Blaster sound card. Uh, there is onboard sound, obviously, on this motherboard. Um, I just wanted something slightly nicer. Um, I do like it. Uh, but anytime you've got like fancy sound cards, it's not fancy sound card, but anytime you've got a sound card, sometimes things get uh, funky when you uh, try to play video games or something like that. Sometimes you got to tweak it or get it figured out, especially like if you play like indie games and stuff like no one's prepared for um, sound cards for some reason. <laughs> anyway, that's the only gripe I would have there. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? The CPU is an Intel i7-5930K. I have always bought... Um, i7 CPUs. 
Uh, the i5-2500K is probably another really great CPU. That one's just probably the, maybe the best bang for your buck that's ever happened from Intel. But uh, I've used the, let's see, I, I think it was the 2600K. I've had 3820Ks, 3930K, and then the 5930K. The 3930K, I've had about probably four or five of those. The 3820K, I've had about four of them. And then the 2600K, I think I've had two of those. Again, all of them were run 24-7, overclocked about 40%. Yes, water-cooled, but still pretty warm. <laughs> and they lasted for years, like, you know, five, six years. Um, and they're still they're still going. Like, no, I've never had anything just die on me. Um, they do lose, they seem to lose power a little bit, um, especially as far as how power you can overclock them over time. You, you won't probably be able to overclock 40% for a decade, but... Um, but I have found Intel CPUs to be just phenomenal. There's no way, uh, I don't think AMD will ever convince me to, to go to any of their processors because for GPUs, it seems like to me, Nvidia is the victor. And for CPUs, Intel is just the god. So yeah, anyway, other than that, I'm looking here. I don't think there's really anything else. I mean, obviously it's an 850 watt power supply. Um, it's you know, nothing to write home about though. It's just, it's a nice power supply. <laughs> nothing fancy about them. Uh, 6,000 hard drives. Uh, <laughs> I do like the hard drive bays here. It's super nice. And especially with a case this size, uh, there's actually a lot of space to feed cables through the back. That's what this isn't. This is actually a pretty clean build for me. Usually uh, I've got cables everywhere. I've got zip ties holding them, but this one's actually pretty clean because you can filter them through the back and the back actually comes off. Um, I'm trying to think of what the uh, the brand is for this case. I'll put up a picture of the cases I used to always get that I liked. Uh, they're good, good mid-size case. And then this case I'll put up too. I forget who, who even made this case. Anyway, that's the computer. Pretty sure I covered everything I needed to cover. If, if I missed something or you're curious about something, feel free to ask. All right, so that's basically everything except for why idle. <laughs> so... First of all, whenever someone asks me what kind of editor they should use, the canned response I always give is just try a few editors out and go with whatever you like best. Because who cares what I like best? Who cares what some guy on Reddit likes best? And who cares what 80% of programmers like best? It doesn't matter. What you should do is try a few yourself. It doesn't matter what other people like. The only time it really matters is if your employer is like, you shall use this editor. <laughs> but I use Idle because it's a simple editor. I like the fact that it doesn't do autocomplete for me. I like the fact that it's not like the greatest feature <laughs> featured, uh, especially like for debugging and stuff like that. I like that because I can go from idle to PyCharm. I can go from idle to Sublime. I can go from idle to Vim. I can go from idle, idle to Nano. I can do everything. I can just go into Notepad and write code. And it's not a huge like, <gasps> like, well, what do I do? Like, I don't have habits that require me to use something that has, for example, autocomplete. Um, and, and I personally just like that. You personally might not like that, and that's totally fine. Like, who cares? Uh, so, for me, I just use it because I think it's simple. I do think it's it's better. Like, I personally think it's better, especially if you're trying to learn um, something new or learn Python in general. Um, I think it's better to use a simple editor. Um, but at least from what I've seen of the Python editors, I have used PyCharm. I always kind of get a little bit of a kick whenever someone's like, "Have you heard of PyCharm?" <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> No, you know what? I haven't heard of PyCharm. <laughs> no. um, I get it. I get why people like it. Same thing, the other thing, like for one uh, editor I wish I could like is IPython notebooks. Oh, I see the, I see the value in these notebooks, um, especially for when you're doing like data analysis and stuff. Um, I see the value, but for, I don't know, I can't put my finger on like why I don't like them. I just don't like them. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Um, so in most cases, uh, I totally, like, I just think, like, who cares what editor I'm using? But when I do data analysis stuff and people are like, oh, you should use IPython, I understand that one, right? But the other ones, it's like, who cares what kind of editor someone's using? Um, but anyway, I keep trying to, to like IPython. I just don't, <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, anyway, um, I think that answers pretty much all the what I use uh, questions that I've been getting. If you have any more questions, uh, you can feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will see you in another video.